coffeenate.com for our special roasting edition. Today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to roast some coffee, some green beans in a popcorn popper. First of all, a little disclaimer, uh, we're using the popcorn popper as it's not intended to be used. So do this at your own risk. I don't uh, advocate using things against their intended purpose. So if you want to do this, do it at your own risk. Don't sue me. Okay. It's a little windy out here. <laughs> it's a little windy out here. Stuff's getting blown around, so just bear with me. All right. So we're gonna we're doing this outside because we're using the air popper and roasting coffee creates smoke and it also creates lots of chaff that gets blown around, and uh, it's a little easier to do it outside. So we're gonna do that. All right, a couple things first. You want to use a popcorn popper with vents on the side rather than the grates on the bottom. And you're going to preheat it, plug it in, turn it on for a couple minutes, let it get warm inside, and then add the beans. Add the same amount of beans as you would popcorn. It'll take up more space while the as the roast. So you gotta stir them a little, a little bit and help them move around so that they don't get scorched. You're gonna want to have your fire extinguisher handy just in case of emergencies. As you can see now they're rotating on their own to dry out a little. After about four minutes or so, you're going to start to hear some crackling going on. That's called the first crack. It's a key point in the roasting process. You're going to roast by two ways. Okay, it's not going to be, you're not going to time it with a watch per se, but about four minutes in with this popper, you're going to hear some crackling. That's the first crack. Okay, it also goes by smell. Right now it's kind of a sweet smell, and uh, as you do it, you'll get used to the smells and the sounds of roasting and knowing when you've achieved what you're looking for. See they're starting to get a little cinnamon colored. See this chaff that's flying around. It's like a skin that's on the bean and it goes inside of that crack that's on the bean. And that starts to blow around. So if you're in your house, this stuff gets all over the place, all right? So that's why we're out here, in the middle of nowhere. Put the safety hood on. I don't want to get hurt out here. Okay, these beans are from Cafe Campesino. There's two brands. Oh, you hear the first crack starting? This is Sumatra. And the one that we're using today is the Yerga Chef. $10 for two pounds. Not bad. And you can see what the green beans look like. Gucci Mama. Look at this stuff flying around. It's like snowing out here. So I'm going to hold this up here so maybe you can hear some of the cracking going on. That's what a first crack can sound like. There's a first crack, which, you know, lets you know that there's also going to be a second crack. That's when I'm going to take them out during the second crack. So we'll continue to roll through the two. You hear that cracking? Seems like you're sitting at a campfire. See all the stuff flying around? That's kind of crazy right now. See that chat going right off of these beans. We're going to listen for the second crack to start. When that starts, that's when we're yanking them. And we're going to put them in this colander and cool them. The smell now is a little more rich, it's a little more oily smelling. Okay, this is the second crack starting, so we're done. The second crack has a higher pitch sound to it. Bam! Okay, you put them in the strainer. You toss them like this. Get as much air in there. We're gonna try. And, we're trying to cool them off as fast as possible. And you're also trying to get that chaff off of there. 
so you can still hear them kind of still roasting in there until they're done cooling. So when you go through, it's about enough for a pot, maybe. Okay, so now that we're done roasting our beans, they're cooling off. You just want to get them store them in a glass container store them in you can even keep them in the strainer do that for a couple days all right don't put them in an airtight container right away because after the beans are roasted they're actually emitting carbon dioxide and if you put them in an airtight container they'll let the gas off and it's going to come out somehow and you'll you'll be sitting around watching tv and hear a loud a loud explosion and you'll you know you'll hit the floor and wonder what's going on that's your coffee beans blowing up so let them breathe, let the gas escape, and after a couple days, then you can put them in the airtight container. Uh, the peak flavor will be from four days to two weeks, and after that, you're going to want to do it again. But as I've shown you, that's only enough for one pot, so you have to do a few batches. Just a couple things to wrap up here. As I said before, when your beans are roasted, they give off uh, CO2, right? and that will protect the freshness. It actually wards off the oxygen which deteriorates the flavor and it takes a few days for that flavor to develop. There's so many chemical changes that happen inside of the bean that it needs that time to really mature the taste. So I really encourage you to try the coffee at different stages and different ages. One thing I found too when I was uh, when the beans were in there they were going around, but the beans in the middle kind of sat still. So you need to stir them up some more um, at different points during the roast to make sure that they're mixing because the beans on the outside will, will actually cook more than the ones on the inside because they're not moving around, not getting that airflow. So that's one thing you want to look out for. All right. Um, thanks again for coming by, and I'm sorry about the noise during the shoot. I didn't realize how loud that, that popper sounded while I was roasting. It didn't sound that loud until I watched the video back. I was like, whoa, that's kind of overpowering, so I apologize for that. I have one question this week from Lily, and Lily asked a question. She wants to know why Kona coffee is so revered and why it's so special. And Kona coffee is grown in a particular region in Hawaii, actually, in the mountains there. and. It, they don't produce very much coffee in the Kona region. There's not much area, but the conditions lend themselves so much to coffee, and the coffee thrives in that climate. Uh, the mornings are really sunny, and there's a lot of humidity throughout the day, and there's not really any, there's nothing that, that uh, deteriorates the coffee plants. It's a type of Arabica. One thing you do have to look out for when purchasing Kona coffee is make sure it doesn't say Kona blend uh, because there's a lot of companies out there that'll say Kona blend and try in their packaging to persuade you to purchase their coffee when it's actually uh, just a small percentage of Kona coffee mixed in with, with other varieties that are lesser quality coffees. So you want to make sure it's 100% Kona if that's what you like. And if it is, then you'll be paying for it because it's $30 a pound or, you know, it's a crazy amount, but uh, a lot of people swear by it. It's good. It's, I'm not paying $30 a pound for it. I drink way too much coffee to do that. All right, so uh, I encourage everybody to send in their questions. Today, actually, after this shoot, I'm going to put the people's names that sent questions in and draw out a winner, and somebody's going to win a package of free coffee. Thanks again for coming by, and we'll see you next week here at CoffeeNate.com, where there's always something brewing.